Thanks for having me. Um, this has been interesting because we've all looked at this similar issue from different directions. So let me take it a little bit different direction too. Uh, I'm uh, in the psychology department, and so when I think of team issues, I think of behavioral and social science. And so I wonder who are some of the great men and women, in this case I only have men as examples, the great men and women who might inform this sort of conversation. And this would be a good test for your psychology 101 memory. Um, this, of course, is B.F. Skinner, who was the rat and pigeon guy, and the famous psychologist, who was not a psychologist, is actually a psychiatrist, which is Sigmund Freud, and Wilhelm Wundt, who started the first re lab. These are all great psychologists and psychiatrists who might inform the idea of teamwork and team science, which is actually another hero nearer and dearer to me who makes more sense um, for people's history here. You may know this is Richard J. Daly. Um, Richard J. Daly was the mayor before Richard M. Daly. In fact, I was born and raised here. Richard M. Daly was Richard J. Daly was the mayor when I was born. And the lessons you will learn from him, especially in an academic setting, might be a bit crass or a bit profane, but he comes from the school of hard knocks, and some of his lessons are very relevant to the kind of work I do. To put it in perspective, I'm considered a health services researcher. I started my career as an department at the medical school at University of Chicago for 14 years. And health services research is very much interested in how to take things in the medical school in the real world, where there are not all these residents and interns and all these great resources around, but in fact when things are pretty limited. And one of the benefits I got out of being at University of Chicago is I was on soft money. I'm not sure how many people know what soft money is, but soft money means if I didn't get grants to cover me plus 100 plus 25 percent overhead, I'd have to see about 2,000 patients a week. So we were constantly looking, hustling for how we were going to get the support for the kind of good ideas we have. And one of the interesting things about services research is it makes a lot of sense in an applied setting like IIT because, as some of my colleagues have already said, a lot of what I do is out there, not in here. Um, I ran a clinic at University of Chicago. I no longer do that. So if I'm going to do health services research, I need to partner with a clinic. And we've seen different pictures of Chicago. I like this picture of Chicago because all those little box correspond with different catchments and different clinics. And each clinic is a, is a realm unto itself. And so I better be very aware of what the local culture is to impact it. But you know, there's a lot of diversity in it. I also work in ethnic disparity research. So we, you may know that public health generally is a problem, but if you're of color or low income, the health problems go up exponentially. And so there's issues of disparity in terms of ethnicity and gender, but there's also issues of disparity in terms of background and career. So we look at interdisciplinary. You have me from behavioral health working with the real doctors from medicine, working with the economists and the statisticians and the like, and you have to bring together our different cultures. And then, of course, the minute you become an academic, you become grandiose. And so the idea is I don't want to just do this research in the Chicago area, but I want to partner around the country. And in Chicago, I might be partnering with wards around the country. I've got to be working with governments, state governments, and the like. And so it sort of makes me wonder, what does all this team stuff bring to me? Well, in terms of partnering with the community, what it does is it brings to me access. And again, because I do work in ethnic diverse, ethnic disparities, it brings me access to diverse population. It brings me research subjects, which are really essential. And it brings me some sense of credibility. I think credibility is a big issue for what we do, what we're concerned about in an applied sphere like we are. Because I guess one of the take home messages for me is that people out there aren't waiting for us to show up at their door to do work with them. So what about teams? Um, here's one thing, I'm paraphrasing here for those of you who actually are, are, are Richard Daly um, biographers. Um, but to paraphrase, one thing he would say is about relationships. It's all about relationships, which are face-to-face -face and personal. And so what makes for a good relationship? Um, one is history. Now, if you're a new person in the world, then you have a less of a history, so you need to partner with somebody. But one of my favorite quotes that I tried to explain to Dennis on the way over is, are you somebody somebody sent? 
is that if you're going to try to move into a community, do you have any credibility in that community from where you come from? And one thing I love that Chicago people will say is they'll say, he's not from here. Um, you know, he was our state senator, and he's a U.S. senator, but he was not from here originally. So even he, in some ways, may not have credibility in the sense of history is a function of length. So how long have you been there? Again, if you're coming from somewhere else, the one of the ways you get length is in terms of who you partner with. So connections is the second thing. Um, and third thing is introductions. So in terms of working with the communities here, for example, I found in the health community, there's two separate African-American communities in Chicago. One's on the west side, which is pretty much run by Danny Davis, and one's on the south side, which has a lot of influence, again, in the federal sphere by Bobby Rush. And so if you're gonna work in those areas, you better make sure you're partnering with people representing those areas. The other thing that makes good relationship is exchanges. Now again, I think there's something to be said. People want to work with me because I'm a bright guy and have a lot to say. But you know, it's also all about the money. <clears throat> and what people have said over and over again is teamwork is tied to grants. And so what do we have to exchange with people? I mean, partly it is money. Um, our group's brought in about $45 million in grants and all of that goes to human capital. So one of the things I can do when I work at Heartland Health Outreach up on, in, Ang Angle, in Edgewater is I can bring resources so they can hire more staff so they'll partner with me. I can bring in resources, so resources are other experts. So actually this morning I was on the phone working at the University of Chicago. We're going to do a project on, on Korean health and colorectal cancer and I'm working with a colorectal expert there. So of course they bring in the gastroenterology roots and there is something to be said for intellectual capital, but I, I, this will sound a little odd, but I can't say it enough, at least when you're working at this grassroots, is people are not out there waiting, at least in the sphere I work with, for our intellectual capital. Um, and so part of what we need to do is make sure we give them an idea of what's to benefit from that. And so in part, what's to benefit for that, what's to keep teams going, is some attempt to partner and get grants. Finally, I think Tom sort of alluded to this, is you can't underestimate the importance of pleasantries. I mean, it is a relationship. Um, I, how did you say it? Handful? Um, you don't want to partner with people who are a handful? Um, for sure. Uh, and even more so, in an academic setting, I can sort of ignore that psychologist who bugs me. But out there in the world where I have relationships with, if somebody comes along with a bull in a china shop, they're going to break my relationships, and so I need to be responsible for that. So every team needs a leader, and we need to keep that in mind. Somebody needs to rally the troops. And in this case, leaders, at least for the function I have, is leaders in terms of putting together a research grant, doing a project, collecting the data, and writing it up. And so perhaps one of my favorite things that he reminds us is there's one boss. Um, he's the boss. And so projects I'm doing, I'm always interested in who's the leader. And I think that's important, because if you're not clear on the team, who's leading it, then responsibility is going to get spread out amongst everybody and nothing is going to get done. What the leader is responsible for is making the relationships. And so I've been working in the Chicago area for 25 years and I have my fingers deep in the healthcare system around the city, at least in the areas I work in. Um, we're the people, the leaders are the people who make the plans, amongst other things. Somebody's got to write the grant. And while grants require many different people to go to put their ideas into it, I've sat on NIH review panels, and I can always tell ideas written by committee. And so somebody needs to have the vision to put it together in terms of one. The second thing as a leader is a relatively cynical thing. And don't get me wrong, I'd love it if OSRP and the provost office tomorrow would turn around and say, hey, here's some resources for you. And I think, by the way, I think Nair was really cool as a faculty member here. Uh, I think that was really great. But my statement in saying this is that I'm hesitant to look outside because then again, I'm going to relinquish some of the responsibility. If I do that, the job's not going to get done. And I'll tell you privately, I love Glenn. Glenn and I ride the shuttle bus all the time. But I would say to Glenn, did you see the recent RFA and, and NINR and what do you think about it? And he'd probably have to go look up what NINR is, which is, by the way, the nurse, uh, National Institute of Nursing Research, is a lot of this stuff is in my home court. 
And so I'm the one who's going to be able to drill down deeply into it. I mean, again, God bless you for any kind of help you can give along the way, but the, the buck needs to stop somewhere. So I guess one of the questions is me as a leader. I, I mean, I am a psychologist. I'm a clinical psychologist. I can sit down on the couch and help you with your anxiety, but I had no background in leadership per se. And I think there might be concerns about being too junior to do it or you're too new. As I said, history is a big issue. I do think mentors are an important part of it. Um, also, the issue, again, the crass issue is money goes to money. So the secret in terms of getting grants is you got to start somewhere getting a couple thousand dollars before you work your way up to bigger ones and bigger ones and $5 million grants. And again, that's what mentors can do for you. So in my opinion, who makes a good mentor? I mean, there's lots of smart people here. A lot of them are, have gray hair. But I think good mentors for team science, um, at, at least in the grant realm that I'm very interested in, is somebody who has done it. So again, in my world, somebody who writes grants, I know many, many people, not just here, I know many, many people who are three days away from writing that definitive grant that's going to bring an institution in $30 million. Somebody who gets grants and somebody who takes that stuff, writes it up, and publishes it. Um, a history of that is great. Doing it now is even better because, as Ganesh sort of alluded to, you know, it's a changing platform. And in terms of the research I've done, what I did when I got out of postdoc and what I do now is very different. So you need to make sure people are aware of the platform. And so finally, pearls you might get is one is, of course, the famous Newt Rockney quote, which is you got to be in the game to score. So again, what I find from junior folks is they're very hesitant to submit a grant and fail. And, and, and don't get me wrong, that's wisdom because the grant review committee is very small. And so if you submit a bomb, and you fail, people are going to know. But on the other hand, if you never submit, you're not in the game. The second thing is, is things change. Um, at first, when Ganesh was talking about that, I was like, well, that's not really true. Right? But my world's changed hugely, not only in terms of what I do, but even more importantly, in terms of funders. So we've talked about NIH and NSF. Anybody know P. Corey? Um, P. Corey is a patient-centered outcomes research institute. Who cares? Uh, the Affordable Care Act, um, the Affordable Care Act, which President uh, Obama put in place, created a brand new institute. Um, they didn't give the money to NIH. They gave their entire portfolio to PCORI, which is the area we work in. And so they've been a great place for us to go. And finally, uh, you need to walk through the doors. Um, we can't be hesitant. Uh, I'm willing to try to partner with anybody anywhere, um, including anybody in the room or IIT. Um, this was a great discussion, and now I look forward to the questions from the audience. <clears throat>